Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante, and this is The Cube. The Cube goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We've been in partnership with MIT. Uh, now this is our third year at the MIT IQ Chief Data Officer Conference. It's our pleasure now to have Murthy Mathi Prakasam here. He's with Informatica, expert in what's going on in that world of ETL, governance, data transformation. Murthy, welcome to theCUBE, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me. So we just had Michael Stonebreaker on, who was basically throwing cold water on virtually everything that your industry has done, multi-billion dollar industry, uh, you know, governance, ETL, it's all BS. How do you respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually I, I think a lot of what he said makes a lot of sense. I mean the reality is there are growing data sets, the data sets are more distributed throughout the enterprise. And so this is the reality of where data is going. It's not all about having one single place with, you know, with super duper amounts of control. What I would say is that there's, there's balance, and that's what we're seeing the most successful enterprises do. On, you know, there's, on one hand, you want to acknowledge that you want to have autonomy and freedom, self-service. These are all movements that I think are inevitable, and that all of our data platforms are going to eventually evolve to, to uh, fulfilling. But the reality is you also don't want data chaos. You don't just want data all over the place. I mean, one of the key themes at this event here is security and governance. So if you're a financial services company or a retail company or any company that's got sensitive data, you don't just want data floating all over the place that's completely ungoverned uh, and insecure. And so the key is balancing the agility of IT, the autonomy of business analysts with the fundamental enterprise needs of security and uh, governance. And that's what modern you know, data management platforms are starting to do. I think it's right on, I mean, it's always been a balancing act. It's fun to have sort of, you know, just take one side, Republicans and Democrats, and just make that argument, but the, the reality is there are a lot of new projects being spun up. That's right. In the so-called big data space. And, uh, and many of them, if not most of them, are being funded by lines of business who could care less about governance and security and compliance because it just gets in the way of selling. Uh, but then it exposes you down the road. So somebody's got to be responsible for the information asset and liability management. And that's that's right. kind of where you guys come in. So how are you helping customers manage that balance? Absolutely, well, so a very simple way to do this, things like data masking. So we offer data masking natively in Hadoop. So you can actually, before you hand the data off to those business analysts to go off and do whatever they need to go do, just mask the data, just so that they don't have access to the raw, sensitive information. Simple things like that, and these are very, very agile products, so it's very simple to do. A central IT team can do that. They're not doing this long and complicated process that, like I think as was portrayed before, you know, there's these simple processes that can just help ensure some protection, basic, simple security governance principles. That actually enables greater autonomy, because now IT can trust the business to having the right data without any of these you know, risks of a lawsuit or any other kind of uh, compliance failure. So from a product standpoint, you've got the platform, it's very successful, it's, it's, it's mature, uh, and then the market, all of a sudden the dupe comes along and everything gets distributed, you're shipping you know, code, five megabytes of code to petabytes of data. That's right. How do you architecturally evolve that product so that it's not a pure bolt-on, so that its performance is maintained, so that it's you know, resiliency and recoverability are still there. Absolutely, well so Informatica's platform it already runs on Hadoop. So we've, for over three years, we've actually had our entire data integration, data quality, data governance portfolio, a version of that now runs directly in Hadoop. So we can now take advantage of all of those uh, features that you're talking about as far as scalability, performance that Hadoop offers. Now, but the enterprises can still get all the best of breed functionality from Informatica at the same time. So I think this is also one of the trends we're going to see as new platforms come on board. Companies like Informatica can easily evolve their platforms and it, so that we can help our enterprises evolve theirs as well. What do you see customers doing? I, I mean, you know, when Hadoop sort of first came onto the scene, people sort of predicted this big sucking sound, in particular for, for your business, which is interesting because when you talk, and for the enterprise data warehouse business, data integration and EDW were like, oh, dead businesses now. What's happened is, when you talk to practitioners, those are the two most important aspects of their big data initiatives. That's right. So what, what do you see happening? It's not a replacing one with the other, it's sort of a coexistence, which many have talked about. Mike Olson has said this all the time. It's not cannibalizing, it's sort of incremental. Maybe there's some price pressure, but 
What are you seeing in the customer base? No, I think you're exactly right. It's about an evolution of the portfolio. And the data integration evolves along with it as well. So because it is inevitable, there is going to be growing da data sources, and there's a growing uh, need for data by different consumers, like the data scientists and new types of automation systems. So it's inevitable that the one-size-fits-all approach doesn't make sense. But that just means that the CDOs uh, out there are going to have a diverse portfolio of different platforms, and now they just need a different kind of fabric that ties all of this together. And that fabric is way more agile and, and enables more agility for the enterprise itself. So it's, it's just a matter of evolution, evolution of the platform layer, evolution of the fabric that kind of ties all this together and ensures all of that data curation that we've been talking about here as well happens in a way that is very agile, very, very uh, nimble and very quickly. How do you see, um initiatives like Spark changing what's happening with Hadoop, with the data sources, with the pace of data ingestion, and how does that affect what you guys are doing? Well, Spark is just another data platform technology, and Informatica always, whenever we see innovations at the data layer, we just try to take advantage of them. And so Spark will be another technology that Informatica can leverage to perform all the operations that customers look to us to perform. But as far as the enterprise is concerned, they won't have to do any Spark coding. We want to shield them from all of that. And because this is ultimately what happens. You have all these new technologies that come out. The average enterprise can't go out and retrain their entire staff to leverage that one technology. And who's to say that technology will last for a long time? Maybe it'll change in six months, a year or two years. So what Informatica tries to do is our development team learns the latest technologies and we embed that within our fabric. So if you're an enterprise that's been using Informatica 10 years ago, the same mappings and the same processes you built simply poured over and under the hood, we've done all the integration for you as far as these new technologies. So whether that's MapReduce, whether it's Yarn, whether it's Spark, and I'm sure six months from now or a year from now, it'll be something else. That's a really good point. I mean, you talk to the people coming out of Google now, they say, oh yeah, MapReduce, that's ancient. And Spark, well yeah, been there, done that. Oh, you should see what, what's happening now. And now, for Spark just hitting the market. Uh, but nonetheless, it does change the way in, in which data initiatives are going to be uh, utilized within, it expands the scope of those data initiatives. So, I mean, from your standpoint, that's good news, right? It expands your TAM. Um, as I said, the, the pricing dynamics are interesting, right? There's a lot of people say that ROI in big data has been a reduction on investment. So people have <laughs> this idea of, okay, it's cheaper, it's open source, uh, I'm using white box technologies. But it seems like in this technology industry, all that means is people end up buying more. Exactly. <laughs> Who make it up in volume. So, so what are you seeing just in terms of the business dynamics? Well, I think that it, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it's hard to tell. that you know, Pricing and, and business, it's very hard to predict trends in this space. But there's definitely a move toward more subscription pricing, move away from you know, big lump sum kind of deals, move to smaller deals, you know, try a project out, maybe on a small scale, and then expand. So this is definitely one of the patterns that we're seeing, where products where you know, we're seeing people who will start with maybe a smaller deployment of a product. Once they get one project going, they can see the value of it, then they can expand that project and then keep going. Uh, and I think the nature of Hadoop and some of these new platforms actually sort of enables that as well. So mm -hmm. I think the business impact might be that instead of you having these big lump sum deals, you'll just see things be a little more smoothed out, which frankly is a win for a vendor as well as for the customer. Now what about this event? Uh, what are you guys doing here? What's it been like for you? What's the discussion going on? I think it's a great event for us because a lot of the things that we do are focused on data management issues. It's about data integration, it's about data quality, it's about data governance, it's about security. And these are the issues that I think this, that keep CDOs up at night. And so a, a CDO is less interested in the, the technology of how it's done and more around the business requirements of you know how do I actually deliver great data to all of the consumers inside of my organization. And that's what Informatica has always been about. We just never had a CDO as a target persona to go actually have that conversation with. So now I think with the emerging role of data in the enterprise and the CDO as the steward of that, of that function, uh, Informatica just has a, a new person for us to go talk How, to. What are you seeing in terms of that role and, and its evolution? I mean, two years ago, the number was, I think, you know, single digits, maybe seven, eight, nine percent of organizations had a CDO. Obviously, the concentration of financial services, healthcare, and government was higher. Are you seeing that take hold now in mainstream? Is this a persona you're going after? Maybe talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. I think it's definitely, uh, it's still early days. You know, it's taking off, but I find that it's not consistent across organizations. So in some places, it's still an extension of IT. In some areas, it's more of an extension of the business and the exact intersection of you know, where does the business side of data management and the technical side of data management come together? I think it's something that 
every enterprise is still trying to figure out. And maybe there never will be one single model. I think every industry looks at data slightly differently. The heavily governed industries have to put a lot more you know, focus around security, governance, and things like that. Uh, there's other organizations where agility plays a greater part. And so depending on the industry, maybe the role will also be slightly different. But it's exciting times because I think ultimately it talks about the value of data, and that's what Informatica has always been about. And uh, you know, I think there's just more exciting things that can happen here. So what should we be looking for? Uh, let's see, Informatica World was this spring. You guys obviously have a have a cadence. Uh, you know, kind of let's talk roadmap a little bit. What should we be looking for from Informatica over the next, say, 12 to 18 months? What are you going to be working on? There's a lot of innovation that kind of goes along this theme of what we call data intelligence. So one of the unique things that we do, because we can see all of the data that people are processing through our fabric, we can actually look at the data and make inferences about what kind of data it is. And then we can use that to build specific functionality on top of our products. So we have this product called Secure at Source, which is a fantastic example of this. Secure at Source looks at data streams and it identifies where there are potentially sensitive data sets. So if you've got credit card number somewhere or other kind of personally identifiable information, especially in the world of big data, where you're just ingesting so much data, you can't have armies of people just sitting there looking at it to figure out, oh, is this bad or good? So we have technology that looks at the data and will surface in just a nice graphical uh, board that says, hey, you've got some data sitting in this area of, of your environment. It looks kind of sensitive. You might want to go check it out. So it's just like a heat map, and it's just a very, very simple way that we can help enterprises actually get better understanding of their data. And I think this theme of leveraging greater understanding in intelligent ways is something you'll continue to see in future products as well. Excellent. Well, Murthy, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's great that, that you could uh, come on in and give us your perspectives on the business, Informatica, and really appreciate your time. Absolutely, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from MIT IQ in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We'll be right back.